guys, welcome back to LGE Division, where we talk about lore, gaming, and entertainment. So, for the first video of the new year, we'll start off with a game that came out last year. It was probably the most anticipated game of 2020 after several delays, Cyberpunk 2077. So, a little background on Cyberpunk. It came out in the late 1980s or late 80s, around the same time as Dungeons & Dragons, called Cyberpunk, the tabletop RPG of the Dark Future, created by Mike Pondsmith. The game came with features such as net running, which is cyber hacking, among other things that are present in the actual video game. The lore of Cyberpunk is a more futuristic version of both the current world line, starting from the 1900s and on to 2077 as the tabletop had a few updates such as Cyberpunk 2020. One of the main characters in the original game is a rocker by the name of Johnny Silverhand, who was portrayed by Keanu Reeves in the game. The story focuses on the underworld of Night City, located between LA and San Francisco. The city itself, and likely the entire country, is controlled by corporations also known as Corpos. Corpos have taken over the main foundation of the system, becoming the ones who tell the government what to do. Sounds familiar, huh? In 2077, you take on the role of V, a cybernetically enhanced mercenary whose life has changed depending on the route you take. I took the corporal route as the male V, so I started at the top of a corporation only to accept a job and get stabbed in the back by my employers. And fired. Kinda like my first job. Hmm, ironic. From there, V's life as a mercenary begins. You can select if you want to play as male V or female V, but for this video, V will be referred to as him because that is who I pick. V's life is turned upside down after he accepts a job to steal a special chip implant that goes horribly wrong, resulting in the death of his best friend Jackie and the implant of this chip into his systems. V is then betrayed by the one who employed him, then shot in the head and killed. So, betrayal happens like twice in this corpo route. After that, he is disposed of in a public landfill, but thanks to the chip implanted into him called the biochip, he managed to survive. The game goes back to the year 2023 in the perspective of Johnny Silverhand and his assault on the top corporation known as Arasaka Industries. After Johnny's last gig, he heads to a chopper with a few others and flies to Arasaka Tower to assault it. Inside, him and his friends deal with the guards and then Johnny plants a nuclear device in the tower. After that, he proceeds to upload a virus into the subnet only to be attacked and captured by Adam Smasher, another known character from the original Cyberpunk series. Johnny is captured by Arasaka goons and brought to their boss but not before he managed to leave a mushroom cloud in the middle of Night City. Before Johnny is killed, Arasaka Industries managed to capture his consciousness and upload it onto a chip, that chip being the biochip, currently in V's head. And thanks to the consciousness or engram of Silverhand, V managed to live but is now stuck with Johnny the, and the biochip is slowly eating away at V's personality and overriding it with Johnny's. Now, on to the game itself. This game probably had the worst launch of any game in 2020, at least to most people, due to all the bugs that were reported, as well as the incompatibility of the game on PS4 and Xbox One. However, on pre-orders alone, CD Projekt Red managed to make back their entire investment on the game, which took seven years only to be hit with a lawsuit from investors, which is currently ongoing. Good thing they got that money needed for it because another one's on its way too. My experience from playing the game as someone on PS4 is a lot of these news headlines on the game are pretty blown out of proportion. Yes, this game does have bugs, but I've really enjoyed it. And concerning the bugs, the main problems are that one, the frame rates drop when in high occupied areas, driving or combat, if anything having a fix to this would be nice as it can contribute to crashes. Two, blue screens after about an hour or two of playing should be at the top of the company's list to fix. Three, dialogue selections not scrolling to where I want them to. Could have been a controller problem as I've only had the problem once or twice. And four, characters not sitting down during a cutscene. Didn't do anything, it was just funny. <laughs> but aside from these problems, I've enjoyed the game. And yes, as states, I have had blue screens. 
But thanks to the game's autosave feature, which kicks in very consistently, the most I lose is maybe 10% of a mission, if even that. Not to mention quick save is an option. For anyone who has typed up a paper or important documents, you should already know that saving consistently is a good habit to get into because if you lose your progress due to forgetting to save, well, that's likely your fault. Overall, I've been looking for a good futuristic open world game since I beat Deus Ex Mankind Divided. I'm not going to ignore that the game has problems that need fixing. However, I've played The Division, which was famous for its bugs, so this is nothing to me. Aside from the major save corruption bug that was on PC, which I believe was fixed, a lot of these complaints are from entitled crying children who can't seem to enjoy a game unless it runs absolutely perfect. I decided to ask some people I know who had the game on PS4, and they said they liked it despite getting some problems, and I'm glad I listened to them instead of listening to the hype. Literally, one of my other online friends said, take the game back. It is meant for PS5. Take it back. I'm actually glad I didn't listen to him. That being said, this game was actually worth 60 bucks for me, unlike Marvel Avengers. And yes, I'm going to keep saying that until I forget about it or they decide to actually make the game interesting. On a side note, Keanu Reeves as Johnny Silverhand is... breathtaking. Legit, they hired the right guy for the role. I honestly wondered if he could make the transition from film to voice, and he did well. Every time I see Johnny in game, I'm like, everyone shut up, Keanu's talking. He did good, and playing him gives mad John Wick vibes, no joke. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. What are the funniest bugs you saw in game? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and then tap that bell icon so you get notified on our future videos, which we will be having more to come, such as with our new classic game series coming soon. Also, check out our podcast on Spotify using the link below, as well as our social media such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Happy New Year, and take it easy.